everyone. Welcome to our eighth annual Pure Utility Group, and uh, we appreciate you joining today. I'm Dennis Beck, president and, of SBS, and uh, we uh, really appreciate having you here today. And hopefully all of you can hear me all right. We're doing this virtual for the second year in a row, and you know the virtual event has some opportunities and challenges associated with it. We get the opportunity to uh, to uh, show th show things to a broader audience, but at the same time, we lose out on some of that face-to-face -face interaction. So we hope you uh, enjoy the event. We want to start by just giving you a big thanks. Uh, last year, with the onset of the pandemic, was a crazy year, and uh, we had a fantastic business year for us. So we had record revenues and you know tremendous uh, increase in customer growth, all during this uh, pandemic. So. Uh, really surprised us by the time the year was over, how extremely well it went. And, and we owe all of that to uh, you as our customers. So thank you for your support during a, a really challenging year. And, and 2021 is, is looking to do even better. So, so thank you again, it's, it's really pretty exciting for us. You know, if you're in the uh, world of infrastructure design, I think you're in a pretty good place right now. Um, there's a lot going on, and uh, you can see here from Gartner and some of the other publications, you know, just are highlighting some of the exciting stuff in infrastructure design. Uh, organizations are really refreshing their GIS systems, either due to technology updates or um, the onset of Esri's utility network. Uh, so there's a lot of activity going on there. The Autodesk and Esri relationship that has really helped define that. Design is done in best in design systems, CAD, obviously. GIS is a very functional way to manage infrastructure assets and model them. So with that clear relationship, we're just seeing a tremendous amount of activity of, of organizations that are, are interested in SBS intelligent design solutions. So uh, it's really a, a kind of an interesting time for us because there is so much activity and there's so much excitement in doing more with design. And uh, so uh, we hope you enjoy the conference this week and uh, we have a lot to share with you. Uh, we are in an interesting position too as SBS. So it was just five years ago in September that we signed our strategic relationship with Autodesk. And that's what allowed us to acquire the Autodesk portfolio of utility products. And uh, so it's been five years now. And as I uh, share some of the opening comments with you, uh, we're going to be looking at it more in retrospective initially in terms of what's happened over the last five years. There's been a lot of stuff. And you know, back in November of 2016, I presented that AUD was going to have three main themes. And for the last five years, we've really stuck pretty closely to those themes of reducing our implementation and support costs, advancing the state of the art and in integration, and then improving overall job throughput, as in getting that job from point A to point B much faster than has historically been done. Over the last five years, we've done well over 750 product improvements to AUD and Utility Data Hub. Uh, that's really significant. Our, our staff has, has grown from initially being Dave Wilbur to a, a team of, of you know, not full-time equivalents, but, but roughly five people that are actively working on the AUD product in addition to a, a pretty significant support team that also will be you know, supporting development and implementation services. So let's take a look at these three areas and see what's happened over the last uh, five years. When it comes to reducing implementation and support costs, you know, if you were to have implemented AUDs five, six, seven years ago, um, you would find that it costs roughly double of what it costs to implement today. So. We've done a lot of tremendous things to really drive down implementation costs, and we're really not finished in that area. Um, we'll be talking about that more. Um, upgrades are another area where, again, the technology had historically had a lot of custom work you know, around interfaces and enhancements to the product and such. You know, As we've driven towards configurable changes to the product and configurable integration, you know, we had just two years ago, our friends at Puget Sound Energy presented that they did a, an upgrade of their AUD system essentially over a weekend. So, you know, it's really a big, big shift from having to do a, a long-term planned project to, to really just implementing some tasks. You know, again, that's been our drive to have the AUD product be more and more evergreen software. 
where we can make changes to it, but it doesn't really impact the user community unless you choose, obviously, to, to implement new user interface requirements and such. Um, another thing we've done is just continued our ability to uh, have release compatibility. Uh, we we uh, are supporting Autodesk 2017 as the underlying platform all the way up through Auto, AutoCAD 2022. So, you know, so we're supporting the full range of the AutoCAD uh, Map 3D tool sets um, since we've, we've implemented the, the product and taken responsibility for it. And so there are a lot of things that have contributed to this. You know, we, we've really done a lot and our delivery team's done some pretty neat things with our delivery methodologies. We've developed uh, the smart tools. Uh, again, our, our big drive has been towards configuration. So I know we have customers that like to sometimes say, oh, we can just write some custom code and Lisp or something like that. Um, we really, really encourage you not to do that. We, we want these systems to be very configurable so they're highly upgradable for you. If you have things you really need, tell us, and we've been doing a good job of getting them into the product. You know, big, big focus on training, obviously. And then uh, we have something called implementability I'll talk about just a little bit. When it comes to advanced integration support, again, our, our mantra around here is integration needs to be product level and it needs to be configurable. And uh, the last few years, we've just been extensively involved in, in Esri integration. And so we've, we've supported ArcGIS and ArcFM for some time. Uh, we added ArcGIS Pro and Utility Network. In fact, we were the first products to actually um, design products to support Utility Network. Um, if you stick around and listen to Sergey's mobile session, and I certainly hope you do towards the latter part of the conference, um, there will be some really cool stuff we're doing with ArcGIS field maps too. And last week we got our release ready specialty. So that's a commitment we've made to keep uh, very current on the latest levels of Esri technology. Uh, we also have supported a number of geospatial platforms for some time, as well as different mobile platforms. And then we have a very rich capability of integrating with, with most of the common enterprise asset management systems, the, uh, several of the primary ones we support listed over here. And then a lot of work with uh, drawing management, document management, management systems. You've probably seen many of these, but towards the middle there, you'll see Autodesk Construction Cloud and Autodesk BIM 360. We've, over the last year, enhanced our utility data hub to provide design information, digital design information to those forums to support more advanced BIM and smart construction. And as you may have seen, if you're at last year's PUG, we uh, enhanced our SPIDA software SpidaCalc interface. And uh, as you may know, Spida was acquired by Bentley Systems earlier this year. And uh, you know, we're obviously a very strong Autodesk partner. I, I want you to know that uh, Bentley contact us, uh, contacted us on the day of the acquisition, as did Spida, and wanted to make sure that, that we understood and all our customers understood that you know, they are committed to us and to what we're doing with Spida integration with, with AUD. And uh, so you can, can rest assured that we're committed to support that and continue to grow what we're doing there. As far as improved job throughput, again, another area, this is kind of the fun thing of just making the, the products do, do more work for you uh, with less effort. You know, some of the things that we've done are maybe a little less obvious, and this is one of them. Over the last several years, we've been opening up our rules engine. And, and what that allows us to do is really help you define more accurate rules, which means you can design more efficiently, you can lay things out with having less you know, manual intervention and cleanup to do. With AUD 8.3, and, and we hope you'll listen to Dave Wilbur's session on Thursday, you know, we're adding quite a bit more to the rules engine. We're opening up the ability to place geometry, to support workflow within rules, and that really opens up the door to do some pretty significant automation. We've had organizations talk to us about automated subdivision layout and such. You know, these are the kinds of things that are starting to get opened up by, by the work we're doing in the rules engine. Obviously, it's going to be evolving over the next several releases, but if those are areas that are interested interesting to you. Uh, we really encourage you to reach out to us and help share more of your requirements because we're we're adding some really cool stuff to, to automate more and more work, you know, automating small jobs, automating more structured jobs and such. We've been doing a lot to uh, improve the modeling of AUD and that really helps support the throughput also. It, it supports the ability to do support more markets, to do more straightforward designs with 
you know, underground modeling and 3D placement, clearance checking, all those kinds of things that typically required a lot more manual intervention can now do be done in a more automated fashion. And of course, Utility Data Hub, you know, our, our integration platform for um, intelligent design solutions. You know, we, one of the things we've done is really strive to keep the designer within the design tool. So Utility Data Hub has really kept organizations not having to send their designers out to the drawing management system and to the GIS and to their estimating system. All that information is available right in the design tool. Um, and that makes the, the whole productivity just pretty significant, you know, significant increases there. Uh, we've, we've done quite a bit of work with our GIS integration. We'll be having a session on GIS and, and Playback Manager and all those capabilities. Uh, and you know, as of a, a few years ago, it was actually at our Louisville conference, we really started to work more and more on CAD integration and applicant design support and third-party engineering firms. We'll have a session on that uh, on, on Thursday, a third party uh, engineering firm integration and support. So, you know, really look forward to sitting in on that one with you because uh, so many of you have third party design firms you work with and we're continuing to work on ways that you can have that seamless flow of information between the organizations. And then some of the other things are just that day to day of we continue to improve uh, the performance activities we do, just helping you streamline the user interface and you know, avoid picks and clicks and, and trying to make things more and more configurable so you can configure things to, to, to get more work done in an automated fashion. So, so that's our, our throughput area. And you know, when we really look at AUD and, and where we've, we've seen it grow over the last five years, you know, we feel like we're covering a very nice breadth. And, and this is really a very powerful thing that AUD does. It can do those very efficient, small, repeatable jobs uh, very, very effectively. And in, in some respects, we can almost completely automate those small jobs. Yet we have the depth of the software to do those full scale engineered capital projects that you know, actually amount to a very large amount of the spend, even though there aren't nearly as many of them. So uh, we've really been trying to approach that full spectrum of design for you. And we appreciate all your guidance on us because that's really driven us uh, for a lot of the enhancements we've been doing. Of course, the big reason you're here uh, is to know what's what's next. You know what's coming up with AUD and Utility Data Hub and such. So if we look, you know what we've done over the last five years. You know we started initially with stabilizing the product. We started to improve the modeling. We really started to add add constructs around network management. And, and we've really moved into a position now in 2021 where we are supporting things like digital twins and the ability to drive more advanced applications and BIM and such. And that's a big part of where we're going. You know, in terms of AUD, it originally was designed for the electric industry, but as we added things, we can very effectively support gas and water, you know, particularly with all the 3D underground modeling things we do. And uh, then over the course of the last year, we've upgraded our communications model to support Esri's utility network. And then uh, one of the, the particularly exciting things that we've been involved with is taking the AUD 3D platform and using it to uh, support physical design of substations. So uh, if you aren't aware of this, AUD for substations will be available in the November timeframe. It's in controlled availability right now. So we're, we're pleased to have some of you from the substation community joining us at the PUG this year. And uh, so we have a, a very uh, productive and successful initial controlled availability with two utilities, one of them down in Australia that is, is implementing AUD and they've completed user acceptance testing. And then uh, the other one is Southern California Edison, which has been a big AUD customer on the distribution side, you'll be hearing from them later this morning. And uh, they uh, have been uh, doing a, a proof of concept and they're moving on to further stages. So really fun, exciting way to use the AUD platform. Joey Baker will be uh, sharing some more information and demonstrating that on Thursday for you. Now, in terms of development initiatives, this is one that uh, is, is pretty near and dear to my heart, and that's something we call implementability. Implementability isn't, really isn't even kind of a word, um, but uh, I th hopefully it describes what we're trying to do. And 
That is, take you know the, the level of effort it takes to implement AUD and just continue to make it more and more efficient. So you know, I showed in an earlier slide how we've really cut the effort down in half. We'd like to take it much further than that. And, and we have a bunch of things that we're doing. Um, the delivery team has spent quite a bit of time this year. And just to give you a, a little bit of a peek of, at what we're doing, uh, you know, we've really established a, a very robust requirements library now. So you know, rather than having to solicit you on requirements, we're giving you a lot of starting information. We think it's not only going to help you get through the requirements process more effectively, we think it's going to stimulate a lot more creativity for you too in terms of taking your systems to the next level. We are starting to implement something called super templates. We used to start with a very basic template. Now we're going to have a very robust out of the box template. For some organizations, particularly the, the small, mid-sized organizations, that may be more than they were already expecting with an AUD implementation. We're starting out with electric and we're moving um, into other markets with the super templates. Our, our first customer to implement that will be starting here over the next couple of weeks. Um, we're also adding functionality modules, which is really grouping a lot of the functionality that we'd normally do into to standardized modules. And so you can think of it as a, as a big macro, but it's actually quite a bit more than that. And then to guide you through the configuration process, we, we're doing something called configuration packets. And again, uh, putting more structure into this so we can get through the whole process more effectively. Those packets feed into our smart tools, which is some of the automation we've had, and we're continuing to improve those. And then we're putting really more insisting, assisting you as organizations that, that implement AUD that need to provide internal resources, you know, your IT people, your test resources, the subject matter experts, all of them need to be involved to make these programs successful. And uh, we're putting in some, some really nice guidelines into our, our project methodologies so you know who you need, when you need them, and, and for how long you need them. And we really think that's going to help you to plan your resources better, but it'll also help us to help avoid bottlenecks and such too, because that can be a challenge during any implementation. Then we've been expanding training. So we'll have a really nice session uh, led by Ryan Kaufman and several of, of our AUD clients will be participating in that with, with training and, and some of the work we've been doing there. So that's implementability. Another area that you'll be seeing our, our work going on, I kind of hinted on this with an earlier slide, is uh, just really enabling BIM. And BIM is kind of a funny word. It stands for Building Information Modeling. Obviously, in distribution and uh, other utility construction, they tend not to be buildings. So as I share some of this terminology, please bear with me that it is kind of vertical construction, building-oriented, but the concepts hopefully will make sense. When people talk about BIM, I think it's hard for them to even define it. But uh, at, you know, from an initial standpoint, the first dimension of BIM tends to be 3D. And that's something we've been doing in AUD ever since the products, really the product's inception. We've been doing extensive 3D work. And uh, you know, some organizations say, well, we, we don't necessarily design our utility assets in 3D. But when you use AUD, you really do. I mean, we're calculating detailed material quantities and we're accounting for bends and sweeps and bypasses. And whenever we do engineering calculations, we're you know, computing flexure and sag and all those kinds of things that really involve 3D dimensions. So that's an area we, we've been doing for a long time. 4D is kind of an interesting one. And you know, again, when I share some examples here of, of where we are right now, I'm, I'm going to be using some substation examples because those tend to be really big, complex construction projects. And some of the things that we're helping enable there, we, we view flowing into the, the distribution world over time. But uh, 4D adds the dimension of time. So in the substation side of things, we've developed you know, the ability to move our 3D models into products like Navisworks or Autodesk. Once things are in Navisworks, then we can tie to Primavera P6 and we can really start visualizing what this whole construction looks like over time and do some more sophisticated project management and planning. So that's a capability that already exists. We just don't see anybody in the distribution industry right now that's looking for it, but, but we anticipate as organizations go from the fundamentals of intelligent design that they're gonna to want to do more and more to make their, their construction processes much more efficient. And, 
And that's where we also see significant savings go going way beyond the, the very significant productivity savings you're already getting with AUD. Uh, 5D is the financial dimension and estimating. Again, we're, we're addressing this very nicely, both within AUD, within external estimating packages, and then within enterprise asset management systems. So again, we, we have a very strong position in the 5D bin. Sustainability is an interesting one. I'll probably hold off on that and, and show you the next example of some R&D we're doing with a, one of our, our investor-owned utility clients. And then 7D, using the vernacular of, of vertical construction that's referred to as facility management and utilities, we like to call it asset management. But uh, a lot of the work we're doing, particularly with geospatial integration, EAM, you know, SAP Maximo integration, you know, really enables the facility management. So, you know, we, we have a lot of the hooks to do some pretty smart things around the world of BIM, and we'll be continuing to do things to help you facilitate BIM. Again, we, you know, we've got really proven results and design productivity with AUD, and it justifies an AUD installation. But when you add the ability to just shave small amounts off of construction project costs or the ability to, to ensure that capital spend is done on schedule, it has a tremendous impact for the, the value of intelligent design solutions. So here's this 6D dimension. I'm showing this, I think, because it's extremely cool. And it shows you a little bit of where we can be taking the 3D models that we generate when we do an intelligent design. So, so this is something Trevor Scullion had done for us. He's shared it at our Substation Design Industry Consortium. But uh, we've been working with Southern Company to do some R&D to take these 3D substation models, put them into the Autodesk Forge platform, and then really they really become digital twins then. And so those digital twins can have sensor-based information associated with them and really su support all kinds of advanced asset management, sustainability, uh, all because we're creating an intelligent model that's based on, on uh, the appropriate things that can create digital twins. So, you know, it's really a pretty exciting thing that we're doing and, and that we have going on with, with AUD now. So, so it's just opening the door to, to a lot of other things we'd, we'd really like to accomplish over time. Um, one more thing I'm going to share, and that is that uh, this isn't necessarily related to AUD, for, but so many of you are uh, heavily involved with ArcGIS and the Esri technology. Some of you are in the process of moving to utility networks. Some of you are thinking about it. But uh, as you may know, SBS has a very robust way of getting data in and out of GE Small World. And uh, we've had a plug-in that we've marketed for, for over 15 years, and it's, it's used all over the world. But uh, we felt as we started to work with organizations that were implementing utility network and implementing that with AUD, you know, we've, we've developed some very robust technology for writing AUD uh, for writing utility network from AUD into ArcGIS Professional. And so uh, we've, we've wanted to take that and commercialize it in other ways. So we've developed a, a very robust FME plugin and uh, it was just announced earlier this year. We're implementing it for a couple of organizations that are synchronizing their data out of small world with the intent of ultimately migrating it to utility network. So, so we have this tool. We'll be sharing a little bit of, of that with you on a presentation on last day of the conference. Andy Street will be leading that. Excuse me. <laughs> so, so we look forward to sharing that with you because we think it can really help you as you facilitate your migrations. So with that, <laughs> excuse me, those are my initial comments. And uh, I just want to walk through the agenda with you. Um, after my presentation, we'll get to hear from our friends at Southern Cal Edison and then we'll, uh, they have a major project. They've been <clears throat> implementing a, a significant upgrade to their existing AUD system. Then we'll hear from Energy Queensland and our, the Energy Queensland team actually uh, down in Australia is in the wee hours of the night. So it's a recorded presentation. Really significant project they're doing with uh, ArcGIS, Utility Network, SAP integration. <clears throat> And they're, as a good customer also, as I mentioned, they're moving to AUD for uh, substations. And then on Thursday, we will be having an AUD product update. So Dave Wilbur will sharing that, be sharing that with us. And 
excuse me again. <coughs> Dave, as always, great to hear from. He'll be sharing all the latest things on AUD. Then we'll have a session led by Jim Lucas that will be talking about some of the shared learning experiences that we have putting AUD in at engineering firms and how you as uh, utility organizations can have external engineering firms perform design activities and, and share that information. There are just a lot of things we've added to the products to do that. We know many, many of you, nearly all of you, will have some of your design work done by external firms. And you want to take advantage of all the integration, all the investment you've done with AUD. So uh, we hope that's a really effective session. Um, Jesse Zelmer from Atwell LLC will also be supporting that. And they're one of our first engineering firms to really embrace AUD. And uh, they've done a lot of interesting stuff. So he'll also be commenting on that. But we'll also have some time where we want to get your feedback. After that, we'll hear from Aaron Schmidt, who will give a projects update for us. And you know, Aaron and his team typically have about 35 active projects going on all the time. So he's going to be sharing some of the, the more interesting things we have going on right now. On Tuesday the 7th, you'll get to hear from Joey. I think I mentioned it was Thursday. This Thursday, but it's actually next Tuesday. And he will give you an update on, on substation design with AUD. Um, then we'll have a training panel, and uh, a number of you will be involved with that, Hydro One and Central Hudson and uh, SCE and Energy Queensland. And uh, going over some of the different things we're doing, we've invested a lot in training and a new training management system over the last year. Uh, and then Sergey Sokolov will give us an update on GIS integration and all the, the, the really cool things uh, that technical team has been doing that, that Sergey has been, been heavily involved with. Then we wrap up on Thursday the 9th with uh, really much more product intensive and uh, program intensive things related to SBS technologies. So um, Joe Chandler is going to have a session on all the analytic things you can do with AUD. We have a ton of cool stuff that most of you don't know about that you can really use. And as you glean more of this information, again, you can drive more productivity, smarter construction, just a lot of different things. So we really encourage you to listen to Joe and what he has to say. Um, our support team has really improved the user experience for the uh, SBS support portal. So Sean Wellman will be going over that. Sean's been really instrumental in, in updating all of that. Then we'll have a mobile solution update from Sergey. And then as I mentioned, the uh, Spatial Biz FME plugin, uh, along with ArcGIS ut Utility Network um, is, is what Andy Street will be presenting. And then last but not least, our Chief Operating Officer, Pat Reed, will, will summarize at the end of the conference. So, so that's the direction we're going. And uh, with that, I, uh, those were my, the end of my formal comments. You know, we really hope you have an enjoyable pug and uh, welcome you to reach out. And I, I think we have a couple of minutes here if anyone has any questions for me. Okay, here's, here's a question. Um, What's in store for SBS over the longer term? So, uh, um, good good question. And I, you know, my comment is, you know, we're going to just do more and more growth within our traditional gas and electric verticals. Obviously, we we just continue to grow and you know more and more adoption of AUD, which we really appreciate. Um, as we take on our implementability initiative, that's going to really position us to be more and more appealing to the rural electric associations, the municipal utilities, the smaller gas utilities, um, as well as the, the water utilities. So implementability is really key to spreading the technology out. It's also really important to uh, engineering firms. So we have, you know, over the last year, we've had over 20 different design firms uh, join us as customers, most of them, many of them on the substation side. And, and so that whole engineering community is really finding a lot of value in, in AUD. Um, again, we uh, are starting to do more and more international work. And uh, so you know, particularly in the English speaking parts of the world, but we are having a lot of Latin American inquiries and such too. And, uh, and then we have a very rich communications model. So, so we have a lot of opportunities to expand into communications. We have a number of organizations that have been expressing interest. So. Uh, and then, of course, our substation business is just a very robust business, and uh, it's, it's been doing extremely well. And uh, there's a lot we can do with AUD as a substation platform to support geospatial integration. And we have some exciting things we can do in the whole world of protection and control and physical integration, too. So 
so that's a little bit of what we have have going on right now so so ryan any other questions not that i'm seeing dennis okay i uh, i think that's probably it then for me um I will go ahead and sign off and we'll get to hear from our colleagues at Southern Cal Edison. Thank you, everyone.